Welcome to another episode of Discover St. Cloud, Florida. I'm Kristen McCary, and I'm here with your host, Janine Corcoran, broker for Corcoran Connect, a real estate company. And so we're going to talk about, we got a really cool subject, it's near and dear to my heart because it makes my job a million times easier. Um, we are going to talk about today getting your house ready to hit the market. That's right. Because I think that that's probably, especially, you know, when we're talking about like last summer's market where it was like everything was flying off that, you probably didn't even have to pick up the dirty clothes off your floor. I know, I know. <laughs> you that's so done, true. That's so true. You could have done whatever. So, but now we're back into a regular market. And so you really need to get your house ready for sale, especially if you want top dollar for your, for your home. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, that's one of my favorite, one of my favorite parts is trying to feel out the seller with, whether it's the missus or the mister, who's kind of in charge. Am I going to insult her? But I'm quite honest. And I just say, you know, once we, we we go through everything and say, okay, let's walk through your house. So this way, um, before the photographer comes, yep. <laughs> studio 913, Kristen, she waits for no one. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> there's no picking up your house when Kristen comes. <laughs> okay. So those magnets aren't on your fridge. They need to be gone. Yeah. So I usually do a walkthrough yeah. with the folks the day of listing and give them a list mm-hmm. and then usually arrive just before Kristen. I walk through the house again, or sometimes I do the night before, mostly right before we take photos and walk through again to see what they miss because a lot of times they do miss things. Right. Yeah. And especially if, you know, you've, I I feel like we're all in it. I've only been in my house for like less than six months. And I'm already thinking about like, if I had to list it tomorrow, I'd have to do so much stuff, Mm -hmm. like cleaning my windows. Like you wouldn't think that that's a big thing, but we have hard water in Florida Mm -hmm. and you have hard water in your sprinklers Mm -hmm. and those sprinklers hit the windows and you're, you have hard water all over them. Yep. So you got to clean the windows. And now as a photographer, can you get those water stains? Those are hard. Those are hard. So it really depends. It depends on what's in the background and how bad they are. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier if they're not there. I mean, sometimes, you know, if it's not terrible, we can, you know, dehaze, kind of like dehaze and see outside a little bit better. Um, But it really makes a difference. It really mm. makes a difference. And, and not only that, but people see that in a photo and th- it's not like they notice, Oh, they have hard water on their windows. They're just like, it looks dirty. Yeah. Oh, that is a big thing. When I, I've gone on listings where I've opened the blinds, like to see what, you know, you're over the kitchen sink. What, what am I looking at? And the windows are disgusting. Right. Like, like that would never happen in a house that we list. And I always tell the folks, listen, the most important windows are the ones that, um, have a beautiful view because they're going to be pulled all the way up. Those blinds are not just open. They're up. Right. Right. To yep. pull in that backyard, that pool, the right. conservation, the pond, whatever it is. Right. You really need to be able to see out those windows. So we always like to, you know, definitely highlight those things. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, if it's a really big selling feature, I mean, you know, what's the, what are the three most important things in real estate location, 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 <laughs> right? Like if you have a beautiful view of something you, that needs to be showcased. Yeah, absolutely. And so you really need some clean windows to do that. So that and, and you give a great checklist. I always give that out at listings. Yep, you we know? do. We do have a great checklist that we provide to the real estate agents that, that, you can give to your customers that basically just walks you through step by step, um, you know, area of each home. And I mean, we always start with the exterior, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's nothing worse than pulling up in your car to show somebody and oh, the outside needs to be mulched, yeah. or there's mildew on the sidewalk or the That's driveway. Easy, to me, that outside, unless it's really bad, is such an easy fix. It is. It doesn't take much, you know. Pots, put some new flowers in, mulch, you know, get the pressure washer, pressure wash it. You know, it's really, to me, that uh, I feel like for most people should be the easiest part. I think the hardest part is once you walk through the doors. Right. Because we all, I mean, I'm speaking for everyone, (laughs) as consumers just save a lot of stuff. Like, I don't know why. And it's all personal, right? Like. You know, you have those those knickknacks that you collect from vacations and or mm-hmm. or or maybe you you're really into a thing like that like farmhouse look, which I love, but you know, sometimes you go overboard. Yeah. yeah. Or like the signs with words on them. Yep. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think you're probably number one thing I have to imagine that you say when you walk in is like and I always joke because, you know, when, when Janine's not there and I go in and I talk to the seller, I'm like 
so you're not living here now, right? Because <laughs> she just basically made you move out, take everything down. But no, it really is. It helps to if you can depersonalize the house because then buyers can see themselves in it. And I have sellers that recommend me to other sellers, friends, and they say, oh, just wait until Janine walks through your house. <laughs> and then so she's going to be telling you to get rid of all this. And then uh, I think that's funny. I'm like, right. gosh, I feel like, you know. The sergeant, right? <laughs> well, know? listen, I shoot for other agents, and and you know, I can tell you that they're not all the same, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so you definitely. What's your biggest pet pet peeve? I have one, but I want to know what yours is. As a photographer, I haven't shot many many houses. Oh, oh boy, <laughs> what's your pet peeve? Or a couple. Of <laughs> okay. <you> know? <laughs> I, have, I have a couple of pet peeves. Yes, my biggest pet peeve is not knowing when garbage or recycling day is. Yes. We interrupt your regularly scheduled podcast for a special announcement. We are out filming today. That's right. Uh, new listing. And um, what day is it? Yeah, today is trash day. Don't film on trash day. Don't do that. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Can you please just <laughs> check because on that? It, here's the thing. It's easy enough to move the trash cans for the house. Mm-hmm. But if we're flying a drone, you got the whole neighborhood. They yep. all have their trash cans out mm-hmm. and it looks terrible. And I just You should put that you should put that as a question on your I, I actually I'm redesigning our forms on our website to mm-hmm. book to make it, you know, a little bit easier so we get the right blocks of time in there. And um and one of the questions is gonna be when is garbage day? Yeah, that's a good like, idea. Just to at least remind you. We, that, we've done that a lot. Right? Yeah, and always, ha- I we live in harmony, and for some reason, but anyway, we I mean, even St. Cloud will do the <laughs> same thing. And we're like, what's like, going on? Yeah, so it's it's funny that. So that's a pet peeve, okay? Yeah, so that one, that one that's drives me nuts. One? That's number one, one? because uh, mostly because for me, it's like, it's it puts you off for each time. Right. Well, it just it stinks because that's the first presentation, yes, right? Yes, Those outside yes. photos. Mm-hmm. And your video, it comes, you know, you sh- flying into the house from the neighborhood, and now all you, you see, see is trash green, cans, the or you cans. see the or you Yellow. see the truck coming by and picking them up. Yeah. You know, so anyway, so so that's probably number one for me. Um, I think the second thing would be like the blinds. Oh, I hate touching blinds. Yes, I, I understand that. Okay, I've yep. I've broken several blinds in houses and I've had to fix them. So I refuse to touch the blinds anymore because I'm not, I guess I just have a way of pulling them right out of the wall, Mm -hmm. just right out of the wall. So, and I usually have sellers if they're home, I'll I'll have them put it up, but otherwise I'll do it for you and take the chance. (laughs) You must just be gentler on, I think I just like yank on the cord or like, you know, whatever, I don't know. But anyway, so that, that's, um, that's it. But also I think, um, the stuff in the showers, Yes, that's a good one. I like that. That's that's probably my number two. You know, my number one. What's your number one? My number one is magnets on the fridge or anything on the fridge. Yeah. When I look at pictures, and they could be the most beautiful pictures, the house looks beautiful, and then I get to the kitchen, and I see all like uh, I don't know what it is. Even even our own agents in our office, they might do a good job of telling people, and then there's a dish towel, there's a magnet. I just, that bothers me. It's like, really? Why do you have the magnets on the fridge? Get rid of them. I know. It really does draw your eye to it, though, when you're looking at a photo. It does. And yeah. you write about the um, the shampoos and stuff. I always, you know, because when I walk through, I'll tell them, like, throw rugs is another thing that bothers me. For pictures, they have to be out. For showings, they can be in. Right. Because they live. You have to live your life. Right. But then I'll say, but shampoos and soaps are a no-no. They can't be out and seen for a showing. I, I don't know what it is. Okay, I get I get really grossed out yes, when I see pictures I of like people's showers and there's like like washcloths or like loofahs and like I, I just I, it I, just I just I, I even get grossed out when I show a house and it has it in there. I'm like I'm looking at the shampoo, see what they're using, and they have soap and they're scrungy. You know, I'm like I'm like I don't know. And then it makes me feel I know this is so stupid, but like it makes me feel like the shower is dirty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I'm imposing, like it's their right. private area right. and I'm looking at it. Um, oh. Where if they just hide all that stuff, please, even for the agents that are showing it, please hide it. Right. Just get a little basket, yeah, literally a little basket from the Dollar Tree, throw your stuff in it and tuck it under the sink. Like mm-hmm. it's just, it makes it so, I, I do that for my cleaning lady too. You hide your stuff. You I do. Oh, I don't know why. Good. Like I feel bad that like she would touch my because chances are she comes and I and I had showered today and like she touches my wet loofah like uh, uh, well, I can't even funny. I can't even think about it. It's but, just, yeah. So folks, definitely get rid of that just stuff. stuff. Just just take it off. And honestly, and I love I love clean counters because that that that, that really attracts the camera. Right, it really it's a good does. Shot. It's it just 
clean. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, people can appreciate the type of counters that you have, especially you have granite, you got quartz, you mm-hmm. know, any of those kinds of nice counters. If you pile it up with stuff, even if it's cute and it matches the room, it just really takes away from from that, which is the selling feature. They're not buying the vase of flowers. They're buying the house. Right. Like, um, So I think that clean counters is a really, mm-hmm. really important thing. And I know I'm guilty of it. I've got three different drop zones in my kitchen counters. I feel mm-hmm. like that I put like mail and purses and mm-hmm. backpacks and stuff. So And, and I think it. the house should be clean too. Yeah. I think that's important. Like I did uh, one listing that we had sold um, just recently. Um, they when I walked around and especially people that have pets and I'm mm-hmm. the same way, you don't realize like I look at the baseboards and I'm like, yes. if they're dirty, people will think your house is dirty. Like you haven't cleaned and the rest of the house could be clean, but yeah, like your floors and the baseboards are dirty and dusty. Um, I, I think about grandma Corcoran. Clean, clean the corners and the rest of the house will clean itself. Yes. <laughs> yes. Or like, how about like when she would, didn't she used to, when she was having like big shindigs or get together, she would paint the baseboards. Yes. Like she would just paint them to make them look because yeah. then it would look clean. so clean. Yeah. It's amazing. But yeah, I, I'll tell you, I walk into houses when I'm, when I'm shooting and you know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm backing it. I'll, I will be in your corners. I'm in the corners of the rooms and I'm, you know, tucked mm-hmm. with the tripod and stuff. And I, that I see that because that's where it all gathers mm-hmm. and it, it does, it makes a difference. I have a confession to make. I don't clean but I will tell you when I do clean, I really like cleaning the baseboards. Do you? And and we just, the house that we're temporarily in, mm-hmm. like had to have a new hot water heater in. And I guess the laundry room just had so much stuff that hadn't been, because we had the clean lady in there, but we told her don't even bother. Right. And and when I pulled out the carpet and pulled out all the extra junk, I just looked at the laundry room and I was like, oh my gosh, it was such a beautiful floor. I got down with Clorox wet wipes on my hands and knees. And I was like, I took before and after pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt good about it because right. I don't clean normally right. and literally cleaned all the baseboards. I started with all the baseboards two or three times yeah. and then I slowly did the tile into little piles yeah. and took an after and I was I felt so accomplished. Right. <laughs> and it really is. It, it makes all the difference. So I think like your baseboards are really important. The windowsills. Um, the blinds. The blinds. I get it. The fans? It. How about the fans? I know. Fans? Listen, I am guilty of my fans never shut off, which I feel like a lot of people in Florida, they just, mm-hmm. they're on all the time, right? They run 24-7. I don't know how it hasn't died yet, but somehow it hasn't. But when you shut those things off for pictures, you will see an inch worth of dust. It is just clean the clean the fans. And I saw a really cool trick. I never, I haven't done it. Um, but I saw a really cool trick where you take a pillowcase and you put it over the fan blade and then like pull the dust off so that the dust gets trapped in the pillowcase. What do you so that, do with the pillowcase? Well, then you just go to your trash can, you flip it inside out and then you uh, can throw it on the wash, okay. you know, okay. but, but it's a way to like not get the dust all over yeah. your bed or the floors the smart, or the whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Or maybe, you know, you shut the fan off and clean it once a month. <laughs> That's an option too. I'm just not doing it. What, so. a, what, what about, and uh, we've never done this, I don't think, but what about um, spraying, before you take pictures, like spraying, wetting your driveway and things like that? Does that? So that has a really cool effect, I feel like, at night. Okay. You know, like if you have a, you know, later evening shoot where you're kind of like in that twilight area, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. you got the sunset going on, that coach lights are on, the house is lit up. Mm-hmm. Something like that might be really nice. But for normal. your everyday, okay. I don't think it's necessary. Um, you know, I don't, I wouldn't want it, especially in the heat of Florida. I think that if you're going to spray it down, by the time we go to take the picture, the first half of it's dried and, <laughs> you know, then you just got like a funky looking, um, you know, driveway. So no, I would, I would say that save that for a special occasion, you know, your twilight type, um, photos, it would look really cool. So what do we miss? We have curb appeal, mulching, cleaning, Mm -hmm. decluttering, get rid of the shampoo, get rid of the magnets off, clean your windows, clean, right. You know, um, and then pack. I I tell people when they have a lot of knickknacks and they'll say, Oh, do I have to get rid of my personal photos i was like yes i'm like listen you're leaving anyway i'm helping you do that early right just pack start packing and i tell them it's not going to feel like your house when you when you do this you it's going to feel very bare right i said but the camera's going to love it i yes. and i said you know i helped you start packing and even sometimes i let them have a room like that extra fourth bedroom because right. they, they don't want to put it in the garage i said then use this bedroom we won't take a picture just right. pile the boxes and start packing but right. 
they they have to do it anyway. I know. I will tell you, you know, the depersonalizing remind me of one thing that I, I don't think I've mentioned. And I, I think it's something that we should, you know, kind of encourage people to do. But if you have kids, and this is just me, like as a mom, like if you have kids and you have their name plastered on the wall, please take it down. Like I just, your photos are everywhere which is the point right you need to sell your house your photos are all over online there's nothing worse than seeing you know johnny on the wall really big and now i don't know i just i feel like take take that stuff down Mm -hmm. it's a beautiful you know you've enjoyed it you're going to put it up in your new house but like i think for this sake it's better to just depersonalize that for the kids Mm -hmm. um you know so that nobody knows who's who's living there right you know yeah. so yeah. i mean if it's a mural and you can't paint over it well then <laughs> what about what about we didn't we didn't touch us at all and i don't i'm not sure if it's on your list or not but what about fixing items like for me it's those little items that you've been living in the house for three years and the doorknob doesn't work correctly i mean just, fix it just fix it just fix it just do it really quick i'm not, I'm not a firm believer in fixing everything that might be fixed because then you have an inspection and you have items to fix right but little stuff like that Right. What happens is people walk in. I was just telling the seller this the other day. They had a lot of, lot of little things that had to be fixed. Mm-hmm. And I said, what you don't understand is when people walk in the house and then they open the closet door and it's off the track because it's been broken. And then you, you know, open the drawer and the handle falls off. Those little easy fixes in the buyer's mind, they add thousands of dollars for everyone. Right. Oh, a thousand dollars for the drawer, a thousand dollars for the closet. Oh, this is dirty. That's another five hundred. Like, like the list goes on. Right. And, and they, I, yeah. Don't you think that, like, as a buyer, you think that well, if you're not maintaining these little things, then there are big problems that you're not maintaining yes. either. It so just I gets think a very it just, negative feeling. It really does. And the caulking, mm-hmm. like, just go ahead and caulk. Mm-hmm. I hate caulking too. Find somebody that can do it. I'm terrible at it. Mine looks like garbage, but find somebody that can do it. Um, and just, you know, put fresh caulk in places. Yeah, it yeah. makes it feel cleaner. It makes it look like you've actually maintained your property all the time. And I get it. I, I can't tell you how fast the six months has gone. Like, I'm just, I can't even tell you, like, I have no idea how it's been six months already. And I'm looking and I'm like, oh, the house is settled. Mm-hmm. So I got some, you know, baseboards that need some caulking in mm-hmm. it or whatever. And I'm already like... It's so easy to just walk past it every day, but if you know, there's this channel called YouTube that like like you know. teaches you how to do it. Yes, <laughs> Grandpa was a great caulker. He told me how to caulk. I mean, I haven't done it forever, but right. Well, maybe you can teach me because you know what? I, my problem is I always cut the hole too big, <laughs> and then and you know on the end oh, of the tube, you cut it? I always cut it too big, and then it's like got and then I got the big glob, and I'm smearing it, and it's getting it's just it's he was a always mess. a firm believer in your finger. And a wet yeah. washcloth. Right. Yeah. He's just use your finger, put it on there. Right. Go, you know, but he had bigger hands than we did, but, right. you know, I never had a, but yes, yeah, so there's some bad cork jobs out there. Right. There really are. I probably did half of them. No, I'm just kidding. It's like, oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. But I simple think stuff is so simple. I mean, I remember when we originally when we moved from Kissimmee, it was like when the house was finally ready to list, it was like, wow, this house is like great. Right. Like it never looks so great. Well, that's how it is when you finally fix those little things when you go to sell. Right. But is it, you have to. It's just the little stuff. Just just take care of the little stuff and, and the rest of it will take care of itself. And I think the biggest things, you know, again, are the curb appeal, cleaning, repairing the minor items. Mm-hmm. We've lived with them. I get it. Like it's like, oh, well, why bother? It's not a big deal. Just when it's you're going- It's a big deal to the buyer. I don't know why that is, but they just- yeah. Dollar signs, dollar signs, dollar signs. The, yeah. the more a buyer can come into your home and not have any negative thought, right? Makes gives them the warm and fuzzies to mm-hmm. place their furniture and love your house. Right. If they look at the broken handle, they look at the caulking job, they look at the, oh, there's a crack in the tile, whatever it is, right. it makes a list mentally in their head of all negative. Mm-hmm. And then your house doesn't get a good review. And then they think, oh, we need 30000 off for your repairs. Right. There's so much work to be done. Yes. And I'm like, actually, it's about $250 in a weekend. But, you know, who am I to like, right. you know? Um, yeah. So for sure, I think those are definitely the biggest things. You know, again, it's you only get one chance at a first impression. And this is a good example. We had a listing when they bought the house. There was um, there had been a leak. They they had it, you know, um, the inspector said, no, it's dry, whatever. But they never fixed it. And so fast forward, now they're selling. So in the contract. And so... I proactively got someone in there to give us a price. They weren't ready to fix it because they lived with it for so long. I understand that. But I went ahead and, and got you know, the painter in to, to look at it, give us a price because come inspection period, 
it'll be like a ten thousand dollar fix for that stain on the ceiling. Right. And it was literally five hundred. Right. And so I told them all up front, hey, before you do the inspection, just so you know, I had someone come in, gave a quote, here it is. Right. And then it wasn't even an issue. It didn't even come up on the inspection report. Right. Because, because we knew. were, you were proactive, proactive about it. in it. I mean, my personal preference would have definitely been to fix it. Right. You know, um, because during the open house, there was a lot of, oh, what's going on here? And you had to explain. And, you know, right. but and it, then people it was $500. Think, right. And you think, honestly, you think anything on the ceiling, you're like, oh. That means it's structurally unstable. Mm-hmm. Like the whole roof needs to be ripped off, or or the bathroom's leaking upstairs, and it's you know yeah, distru- it's, just it's not. It just it just puts all those thoughts in your head. So yeah. I think any of those things that you can, and, you're, and we're not talking about like hiding things, right? Like I'm not just mm. so you, just so that's not misconstrued. I'm not saying like not to you know then it still needs to be disclosed. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, <laughs> but you should still fix it because when somebody comes in and sees it, it's just all the thoughts that it causes in their minds mm-hmm. about how you know, how you didn't maintain the property or how there's so many things wrong with it or, you know, those kinds of things. So I think those are really important, um, yeah. you know, fixes and things to do. But essentially the, the takeaway I think is just to clean, mm-hmm. make it look good. Mm-hmm. Right. We're not yep. saying to repaint the house. Unless no. it needs it. Right. Well, unless it like really needs it. But you know, like I'm all for that too. T- touch up some spots. Like if there's a wall that had, you had a bunch of pictures and you took the pictures down and now you got, you know, like yeah. sun bleach stains and yeah, please yeah. repaint that wall. Right. Um, but you know, for the most part, just, you know, kind of just come through and, and really just spruce it up. Yeah. Spruce it up. Absolutely. And, and you know, take care of those projects on the honey do list that you've been leaving for forever. <laughs> Ever and ever. Now, where can they um, get a copy of this checklist? So you can get a uh, copy of the checklist on our website at studio913.com. It's studio, Mm S-T-U-D-I-O-N-I-N-E, 13.com. There'll be a link uh, to the real estate section there, and you can uh, get a copy of the pre-listing checklist from our website. So Good. Definitely want to check that out, but we do that for our, it really saves me time too, mm-hmm. you know, cause I've I, had listen. sellers actually, when I came, they, they handed me the list back with the check boxes. I was like, Oh, I guess I thought it was homework. Well, you should bring a red pen next time and just put a plus. Yeah, give a star <laughs> to pull, pull out the star. And you did on there. good. We can put this on the fridge. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Here's yeah, your homework. Yeah, yeah. yes. Kind of like when you leave the seller's disclosures, I leave that. So, yeah. yeah. But that's, that's, that's so cute. I love it. I love it. But yeah, it just, you know, it helps. I mean, listen, we're the photographers. We're there to make sure that your house looks the best, but I really can't. Like, I, I also don't like touching people's things. I'll move a few things, mm-hmm. but I really don't like touching people's things. I don't, you know. It's... People always ask me that. I said, well, when the photographer comes, they're going to move. And I was like, no. 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 I I'm, like, I'm I telling won't... you now what to remove. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll hide your remotes. I might tuck your paper towels under the sink or, you know, move your trash can or something like that but i'm not oh or, i have where sellers were in home and i was like moving so much stuff that i was taking pictures I was like this is in your pantry this is here i put this here and i was just, just like just look in the closest closet or <laughs> yeah. drawer because that's where i put it i don't really go far but yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it happens but we try not to you know i don't want to i don't want to touch anybody's stuff and then you know it go go missing right. or whatever so um but yeah definitely check that out um yeah thanks so much uh, for joining us for this podcast we had fun talking about this. this is a fun fun topic for oh, us yeah. love love this and and feel free to check us out on youtube or give us a call at 1-844 st cloud that s-t-c-l-o-u-d um and don't forget you can find us on any of your favorite uh podcast platforms if you prefer to listen or you can check it out and uh see us making faces at each other and and all that kind of good stuff uh on youtube but thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you in the next episode